In this video, we're going to prove what's called the squeeze theorem or pinching theorem, or sometimes even the sandwich theorem. I prefer squeeze. It basically says if we have three sequences, A sub n, B sub n, and C sub n, and C sub n is trapped between the other guys here, A sub n and B sub n, and if A sub n converges to L and B sub n converges to L, then whatever is trapped in the middle also must converge to L. So it's pretty clear intuitively, we just have to come up with a proof. So proof. We'll start by writing down our hypothesis, uh, which is basically all of this stuff up here. So suppose we have three sequences, A sub n, B sub n, and C sub n. And they are such that, well, C sub n is trapped in the middle. So A sub n is less than or equal to C sub n, which is less than or equal to B sub n for all positive integers n. And by the way, you can relax this condition. As long as this inequality is true for all little n greater than some capital N, uh, everything's okay. In other words, as long as this is true from some point on, then the squeeze theorem still works. Okay, and we also have to assume that the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n is equal to L. So I'll write it this way. A sub n converges to L. And we also want this to hold. So I'll write that as B sub n converges to L. So we've written down all our hypotheses. Now we just have to figure out how to prove this. So this is what we're trying to show. So using the definition, we're trying to show that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer, which we'll denote by capital N, such that for all little n greater than capital N, the distance between C sub n and L is smaller than epsilon. So if the distance between C sub n and L is smaller than epsilon, that means that C sub n minus L is smaller than epsilon and greater than negative epsilon, right? It's trapped, right? Its distance is smaller than epsilon, so it's trapped between negative epsilon and epsilon. We can add L to all three sides, and we get this inequality. So this is equivalent to this. So if we can come up with this in the proof, uh, we're basically done. All right, so to start using this definition, we have to start by assuming that we have an epsilon greater than zero. So we'll start by saying, let epsilon be greater than zero. And then we somehow have to find our capital N such that this condition is true. So first, let's use this condition. Since a sub n converges to L, there exists a positive integer. Now, we have two sequences converging to L, so it's a good idea generally to maybe call this n sub 1, such that for all little n greater than n sub 1, the distance between a sub n and L is smaller than epsilon. But we know we can play the same game we did with c sub n and write this it est. We can write this as a sub n less than L plus epsilon and greater than L minus epsilon. And this is true for all little n greater than capital N sub 1. All right now let's use the fact that b sub n converges to L. So since b sub n converges to L, there exists a positive integer, perhaps another, so let's call it n sub 2, such that for all little n greater than n sub 2, the distance between b sub n and L is smaller than epsilon. And as before, it est, this is equivalent to saying that b sub n is less than L plus epsilon and greater than L minus epsilon. So we have a couple conditions here. I'm going to circle them. We have this one here. We have this one here. And we have this one here. And with all three things, we should be able to finish the proof. I'm going to finish the proof over here on the side. So we're going to continue up here. So first, we need to find 
uh, a capital N, right? We have a let epsilon be greater than zero and we define a positive integer N. Well, we want both conditions to hold. So the natural thing to do is to set capital N to be equal to the maximum of n sub 1, n sub 2, so it's the biggest one. Okay, then for all little n greater than capital N, okay, so if little n is bigger than capital N, it's certainly bigger than the biggest of these guys. So it's bigger than the smaller one. So it's bigger than both, right? So, so we have this condition holding and this condition holding. And then let's see if we can create this inequality. Well, we know, let's see, L minus epsilon. So let's write that down, L minus epsilon. And now we have to use this. So L minus epsilon is less than a sub n. This is less than a sub n. And this inequality is true because little n is bigger than capital N, which is bigger than n sub 1. And that's the condition required for this to be true. All right, then we can use this box again. So this is less than or equal to c sub n, which is less than or equal to b sub n, again, by the same box. And now we need to show that this is less than L plus epsilon. Well, we can use this condition here because little b sub n is less than L plus epsilon. Why? Because little n is bigger than capital N, which is bigger than n sub 2 because capital N is the maximum, right? So this condition holds. And so b sub n is less than L, pl L plus epsilon. So this is less than L plus epsilon. It is c sub n is less than L plus epsilon and greater than L minus epsilon, right? Less than L plus epsilon and greater than L minus epsilon. And now what we can do is we can subtract epsilon from all three sides. So we end up with c sub n minus l less than epsilon. And this is the same as saying that the absolute value of c sub n minus l is less than epsilon. Beautiful stuff, right? So we started with an epsilon greater than 0. We found a positive integer n. So this is certainly an integer such that for all little n greater than capital N, the distance between c sub n and l is smaller than epsilon. So this proves, this shows, that the limit as n approaches infinity of c sub n is equal to l. And we have proved the squeeze theorem. I hope that made sense.